Hi folks and welcome back to another Van Chat Tuesday and in this video we're going to talk about suspension for camper vans and motorhomes um, because I've recently done an upgrade to my van and it gives me the opportunity to talk about three different types of suspension you put on your camper van and how I think each has um, made a difference to the camper van's handling and which I prefer. Now before we get anywhere, I do want to point out that this video is sponsored by Rhodes Vans and I've been given the Sumo Spring uh, Suspension Lift Kit, the Stage 1 Suspension Lift Kit uh, by Rhodes Vans um, in order that I can then give you my opinion on how it feels on my camper van. Right, so let's crack on. I started off with a camper van, much like this one, Fiat Giacato, uh, which was six meters um, and weighed three and a half ton. Uh, slightly less than that, but you know, three and a half ton was its weight limit. And we carried pretty much everything we could with us. We did notice it started to get a bit saggy on the rear and no one likes a saggy rear now, folks. So I made the effort to um, not only change the rear springs to double leaf springs, but also to get upgraded shock absorbers for the rear as well. And that was a job that I did myself on the driveway when we had a house. And that made quite a considerable difference to the handling of the van. But to be fair, that added an awful lot of extra weight to the van in excess of about 40 kilograms. It took all day to do. So yes, um, a tricky one, should I say, because you're trying to handle these extra leaf spring weights on your own put it back in position you've obviously then got to make sure the locating pin drops back in on the axle in the correct place otherwise your sort of um, alignment can be out of place so there's a lot to check on and a lot to do um, and it's certainly probably the extreme or most extreme DIY job I've ever done because it was obviously quite a lot of work to do um, and um, involved quite a lot of checking and uh, measuring and you know just to make sure everything sat back in the correct place it was actually curved the wrong way so rather than just being flat it was curved the wrong way um, and now with the double leaf spring on it just about leveled it um, and I was hoping for a little bit more I was hoping for a little bit more rise out of it we obviously moved on from that van and then we bought the motorhome we were kind of a bit more concerned about you know well if it's bigger and there's a boot in the back how are we going to load it up and then we found looking around and everything we found the van we wanted and that had already been fitted with airbag um suspension on the back it still has a single leaf spring it still has a standard shock absorber but at the bump stops which are these kind of like um rubber sort of mounts and what happens is the bump stop squidges out a little bit and prevents like say the dead axle from um you know just sort of smashing into the chassis underneath so in the motorhome um, somebody had got the airbag upgrade which actually um very simply you just remove the bump stop um, and put the airbag system in replace um and of where the bump stop is um, and that works quite well uh, the one we had was one where you provide your own compressor um, and then a gauge for left and right airbag. Um, so you could use it if you wanted to, if you're on a really dodgy park up, it was a bit sort of angled and you could use it to sort of like lower one side or raise the other side to level the van up. Um, we didn't really bother with that. I was just concerned that they were both level at the same pressure every time. Um, and to make sure that, like I was saying, that, you know, the leaf spring had a a smile on its face that it didn't look like the van was um, dragging around to a ton of weight which ultimately you know living and traveling full-time in the van uh, it's going to be dragging around a lot of weight and the ride inside wasn't too harsh either because you got to remember it's pretty much giving you a compressed bag of air um, and whilst you might think well it'll expand a little bit it doesn't it goes up or down but it's air in there um, and air doesn't compress that well so you do get quite a, a stiff ride on the back if you think of it that way. Um, and obviously then getting this van and understanding about this, this is one of my extreme kind of uh, visions of cross from the start was not to get too carried away with the build. So I ended up with a lightweight camper conversion um, such that I could go to areas where it had um, more restrictive weight conditions like in forests and off the beaten track, you don't want to be too heavy 
because otherwise it's just going to get stuck if the ground turns to mush. So therefore, I was thinking, you know, once they get built, I'm going to understand what the weight is in the van, and then I need to see how the leaf springs on the back are coping. And in all fairness, they were just about all right. They still had a little bit of a smile on them, or a smile, um, but they weren't flat, and they certainly weren't sort of, uh, you know, suffering like they were overloaded. Um, but herein lies uh, the next little upgrade. Um, I've thought about doing the double leaf spring, but then again, weight. It's adding a lot of weight to the vehicle to just achieve, um, you know, better ride quality. So I thought, well, maybe the airbag system. Um, the airbag system is a bit more complex than I really wanted to deal with because I didn't really use uh, the ability to raise it up loads or lower it or have it one way or the other. So it's quite, um, yeah, quite complex system to to put it all in to then not really gain anything from it. Um, and that's when um, Rhodes Vans got in touch and they said, you may be interested in this stage one lift slash suspension kit. Um, so it's Sumo Springs is the kit. Um, and obviously this kit's given me a front spring assist and a rear uh, bump stop assist. So that's my original factory bump stop. And bearing in mind this van's only a few years old, you can see how knackered it is. So I'm going to take that off and then swap it for that one. And if we just do a bit of comparison, the new one <laughs> is much longer. All right, well, there's a lot of banging and clattering. It's in what I did have to use the actual jack to spread out the leaf spring a little bit more which is, um, yeah, extreme, <laughs> but it's in. Yes, I've noted as well, I probably need new shock absorbers as well, but um, it did pass the MIT, so maybe it's just a bit rusty or something. It's not leaking. All right, so this is the near side one. As you can see, that's totally shot. Half of that's gone already. So Rob's come up visit, and Rob's got double loose springs on the back. And if you work out where his center hub is and the line with the door, and the rear bumper just goes over the top and that's the stance you get and then with the sumo springs on it's literally identical maybe there's a tiny bit more of a gap but yeah so you're getting the same benefit of double leaf springs for far less weight right so i've just done the back two uh, the near side one went far better than the offside one uh, sorry i forgot do it all over my face it is what it is. Um, so yeah, go for a spin. Just see how it feels with the difference on the back. And then I'll come back and put the coil spring um, uh, fitment in. And um, yeah, then we'll see what the measurement is, what the height difference is and things like that. Wow, that's made a huge difference. So I've had double leaf springs on my panel van conversion, which was identical to this. Now obviously that added double leafs. So the weight that you added to the van was quite extreme. Maybe sort of like 40, 50 kilos, or maybe 40 kilos, something like that. So obviously putting these Sumo Springs on, there's no weight difference at all. And I can remember doing the double leaf springs myself on the other van, there's a video about that as well. And that was um, an awful lot of effort, massive amounts of effort. Not only because the extra weight you're lifting around, but just everything else involved it as well. So I would say this is far easier. Um, yes, it's slightly more expensive, but you do get the front kit as well in this stage one kit. So let's go and fit the front kit and then we'll go out for a spin again and see what it's like then. But I am well impressed with this. Bonus about uh, fitting these coilovers is you don't have to remove the wheel. Just jack it up so you've got access to the coil and we're installing it there upwards so not the bottom bit but the middle bit and then moving it up a bit so you need to clean these off so clean all the dirt and all the guff off there and then there's a deeper groove one side and a shallower groove the other so this is the deeper groove and the deeper groove goes to the bottom it says and then just feed it in and see how we get on it was so easy on the other side that it just fell in place it's brilliant so i've jacked up make sure the wheel is off the ground so the strut is at its maximum allowance stretched out 
Um, and then, like I said, there's one thin edge and one deep edge or lip. The deeper one is going on the bottom and the thinner one's going on the top. So I'm just going to clean it all up, which I'm just going to use my gloves. Um, and then I'm going to spray WD-40 around that and that and that. And if it's like the other one, it'll just pop in. Literally within seconds, it's on. And all I need to do now is just twist it around to get it onto the top one. And to get it onto there, you just stretch it out. There you go, it's done, installed, and that's it. So to do both sides has literally taken me 20 minutes. So the easiest way I can explain it is that you stretch it out and then push it over the coil. And by pushing it over the coil, it kind of sits and wraps around itself all in one. Uh, there's just not enough room here to kind of film it properly and film what I was doing. But literally you just, once you've sprayed, the, once you've cleaned the coils, you've sprayed the coil with WD, you've sprayed the upper and the lower deeper edge with WD, stretch it out, pop it over the coil. And once it's in there, just kind of let go and it wraps itself around. And then it's just a matter of manipulating with your hands to get it up because it says to get it into the third coil up over your coil over and you're done. It's that easy and it looks really cool. So yeah, send the jack down. I've not even done the wheel nuts or anything on this side, not touched anything. So yeah, literally let that down. We'll go for a drive again, see how it feels and come back and re-measure to see what it's like all around now. Now that feels a whole heap better, much more planted. You can feel that the tires are being pushed into the road more. So you're getting far more contact, road surface contact, which is, you know, exactly what you need in all occasions. Fine overtaking, because you go off camber and then back on camber as you cross the, you know, the two sides of the road. That was fine. No issues with that then. Very smooth, very stable. I'm now cruising, doing 60, country lane. Very smooth, very stable. It's nowhere near the same body roll. Steering feels precise, you know. So that has really transformed the van. Well, it's actually returned the van to sort of a factory spec. As weird as that sound, but it now drives like it did when I bought it as a base panel van. It's because you remember, like, we build all these vans out, and despite the fact that I've tried to build this as lightweight as possible, I'm still obviously adding an awful lot of weight to the van. So at the end of the day, the suspension is therefore being compressed permanently, far more than it ever would have done. So therefore, the fact that this kit has returned the van to its original kind of driving feel, driving heights and stuff like that is really good because it means that the vehicle's performing now like it wants to you know it's actually riding at the height that it was designed to rather than riding lower because you're putting so much more weight on it so yeah that is fantastic all right let's go measure it then all right so this is the driver's side aka the offside front wheel that is now 79 thereabouts maybe 80 offside rear so line that one up so that's what it is over the tire and then up to the wheel arch is now there and then the near side that's that measurement. And then the near side front. That's that measurement. And then there. So as you can see, measured it before and I measured it afterwards. And this might not sound like a lot, but this is just what it's raised the vehicle. So it's a stage one lift kit. So it's a basic lift kit. So it's raised the vehicle um, three centimeters at the front and five centimeters at the back. Like I say, might not sound a lot, but what I can say about the handling is just amazing. So I was obviously going from the motorhome to this 
driving this felt like wow it's like one of the nice cars i've used to have the sports cars you know the way it handles and it's nippy and it feels great so i remember i made a video about it saying how much i love driving this van when i got it so it's a nippy and it's a nice little van and then obviously i've loaded up with everything fair enough i've removed things like bulkheads a spare seat you know some metal out of the van with all the holes and everything i've put in there um, but ultimately i've still added around about 450 kilos to the weight of the van um, in my conversion so obviously i've put a lot of weight in there albeit i've tried to spread that out as much as i can evenly from side to side um, and you know sort of like from the middle of the van um, to hopefully not a lot over the rear axle but ultimately it's made a big difference um, there's a lot of extra weight in the van that was never there before um, and obviously that affects the way that these vehicles handle like i said all along these vehicles are never really meant to carry their full load all the time yes three centimeters at the front and five centimeters at the back might not sound like a lot but you can tell it does now look severely different in the way that outside you've got nice big gaps between the um you know the wheel arch tops of the vehicle and the top of the wheel whereas before it kind of sat a bit lower um, but handling wise ah it's just nice to be able to turn into turns and not feel like you're oversteering because the vehicle's trying to push one way so yeah much more nimble and obviously that suspension's pushing the wheels onto the floor harder and therefore you're getting contact with the wheels on the floor a lot more time uh, which means more grip more stability um, should actually mean a smoother ride as well so no more bouncing around um, and might even lead to a little bit more efficiency um, because of the way your driving style will slightly change uh, to the way the vehicle's moving i've noticed as well uh, it seems to accelerate better as well so it's almost like the vehicle seems to be happier that it's now got this new sort of stance of the ride and everything on there so if you're interested in this kit or any of the other super springs kit um, if you go to the road vans website and type in gadget spring or one word you'll get five percent off the super spring range so whether it's a stage one kit or the other kits they do or the other products they do um, head over to the road vans website again it's down below in the video description and also on screen so enter the code and you shall get a discount off your basket so they have many options if you want to go down that route uh, they also sell wheels and tires and stuff like that and other kit as well so do check their website out uh, to see what other options and other goodies that they can uh, provide for your van um, but ultimately i'd say this stage one kit uh, the sumo springs kit is ideal if you want your van's handling steering and general driving characteristics to be um, smooth safe nimble um, and a little bit of extra ground clearance for those times where you do find yourself going off road a bit and you don't want to get sort of like you know stuck or uh, you know beached on a bit of ground in the middle of a rutted road or whatever or well, the other thing is if you're cresting from you know one road surface to another um, that those might be on different heights and um, that you get beached in the middle whereas now with a, a bigger lift kit the wheels can get around that so those are the options um, and ultimately i don't know whether i'm unique that i've owned roughly the same van with three different types of suspension on it in such a short period of time and um, that i've got video of each of those different types of suspension um, or whether it you know somebody else has done this and they've gone through the same thing on one van i don't know maybe have let me know in the comments section down below and if you've got experience of you know like the airbags the double leaf springs or the sumo springs then obviously comment in the comment section down below and let other people know what you think of it um, and to let other people know what your experiences are if you fitted it yourself as well so that other people then can go well i don't know which one to fit because ultimately that's what all these videos are about it's about us all helping each other out um, in either understanding if we need something or understanding how we can help each other um, you know solve a problem or just general little bits of advice that makes some upgrade a little bit easier because well so and so said they did it and it only took them a few hours and yeah there was a bit of a struggle but they still did it with basic tools you know without going to a garage and all that kind of stuff and that's the whole concept of this is that we're all trying to help each other in that way right 
I think that is enough of me waffling about this particular subject. Um, that is it. Um, I'm going to suspend it now. <laughs> Ah, oh dear. I had to go there, didn't I? Anyway, yeah, I'm off out enjoying my van now. So um, there might be a lull in normal video vlogs while I just get back on the road. Uh, generally, I am solving little things as I come across them right now. So not much in the way of epic things of travels or anything like that. And the weather's been a bit naff as well. So um, that's a big factor. So I just wanted to say as well, if you've also got a topic that you think will be good for a Van Chat Tuesday, uh, let me know in the comment section down below um, and I'll see if it's worth making a little video of. Right folks, take care and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.